Well, good morning, everybody, um, and welcome to the second day of the Microcredential Forum. Uh, my name is Alyssa Bigelow, and I'm a digital learning associate with eCampus Ontario. And I'm excited to uh, welcome Sarah Peak and Frank Ong uh, from Humber College to uh, speak about their uh, very interesting project. Um, I'll start uh, the introductions with Frank. Um, Frank uh, holds an MSc in medical sciences and is passionate in working with, um, with and for youth. He previously worked as the project coordinator for the digital fluency for the workforce stackable micro credentials project at Humber. In this role, he led the implementation of the project with an interdisciplinary team of educators, workforce developers, and community and industry partners. And Sarah Peake is the Associate Dean of Flexible Learning at Humber. This new role at Humber supports the development and implementation of flexible programming initiatives and the ongoing review of existing programs to explore opportunities for flexibility to meet the rapidly changing learning needs of diverse students. Sarah is part of Humber's Center for Innovative Learning, which supports teaching and learning across the institution. So I'll be moderating the chat today and I'll uh, see you guys after your presentation. Uh, I'll throw it over to Sarah. Thanks so much, Alyssa. It's really nice to be here. And um, I was just saying this event is a significant one. It was the very last thing I did before the pandemic two years ago. So I'm glad to be back uh, and uh, really happy to know that you're interested in this project. Before we start, uh, Frank and I just want to take a few moments and uh, recognize that while we are uh, all in various places and territories and lands today, uh, that we have um, a common sense uh, Frank, I think we're on the wrong slide. We're, we have a common, there we are, thank you. Uh, we have a common responsibility and a common uh, desire to give respect to the first inhabitants of uh, the lands that we live in and work in. And, uh, and so we just suggest to you that you briefly reflect on where you are today and the uh, relationship that you have to the land and to the first peoples of that land uh, and if you want, you can share that in the chat um, and just briefly mention to uh, each other where you are and who you are and what brings you here today. Go to the next slide. So here is our agenda for the morning. We're going to uh, briefly talk about micro-credentials at Humber. And I, I mean briefly because we want to essentially set the context at Humber for this project. Uh, this project was, um, and has been ongoing work that has been across the entire college. Uh, and it really has been an opportunity to test many of our theories about micro-credentials. Uh, and so we want to spend the bulk of our time looking at the actual project itself uh, and talking about some of the objectives, including the fact that it was a research project. We're gonna share some preliminary results. We'll talk about some of the challenges that we've had in uh, this project and some of the next steps that we've planned. And we will have some time to answer some questions as well. So Humber micro-credentials. This is not unfamiliar to most of you if you've been working in the micro-credential space for a long time. Um, we have really been focused on uh, these uh, four features of micro-credentials in all of the ways that we've defined them at Humber. Competency-based, we recognize that micro-credentials in the very nature of the, of the term micro are uh, short, they are compact, they focus on competency as opposed to um, you know, a, a breadth or depth of learning. Uh, they really must be inclusive of industry participation, both at the inception of the concept of micro-credentials, through the development if possible, and then they need to also be linked uh, to the objectives that industry has uh, for individuals who earn micro-credentials. Uh, assessment is a key component of a micro-credential. There is a demonstration of knowledge or of, of competence that is critical to a micro-credential. And wherever possible at Humber, we, we try to uh, ensure that they are PLAR based. And so by that, we mean that uh, it's not so important that individuals uh, complete the learning, the micro learning at Humber, if there has been uh, an opportunity that that learning has occurred elsewhere in non-traditional sources and in other institutions. And so we look for ways to make our micro credentials PLAR based. And as I said, this project has been one of our leading examples of, of a test of all of these features of micro-credentials. 
a little bit more information about micro-credentials at Humber, we have three types. Uh, we, we have embedded micro-credentials, which are really essentially certification of, of work that exists already in uh, post-secondary courses and programs. We have what are called short course micro-credentials at Humber, and these are probably the most familiar to most of us. They are uh, typically a short uh, learning period, burst of learning, uh, followed by an assessment, and then at the uh, successful completion of the assessment, uh, the short course micro-credential is, is awarded. And then PLAR-based, as I mentioned, that, um, that opportunity for certification of learning from non-traditional sources. And we've found that this has been uh, especially interesting to um, community groups and to employers who really want to hone in on sets of skills that need to be learned as opposed to having uh, staff members uh, repeat needlessly learning that they've already acquired from somewhere else. I'm going to turn it to Frank uh, to describe the, the actual project project itself. Yep, and then uh, thanks, Sarah. So our, our goal for the Digital Fluency for the Workforce, or DFW in short, uh, which we'll be referring to in this presentation, is one to develop a series of digital fluency micro-credentials uh, that is both, uh, I want to highlight, stackable and flexible to the learner's needs. Uh, and our main aim is to upskill workers uh, to help them transition back to the workforce, but also provide employers with access to digitally fluent workers. I also wanted to mention that uh, the DFW Micro-Credentials Project is a research project and it's funded by the Future Skills Center uh, and has brought together you know, several de departments and faculties at Humber, including uh, with the lead of Community Outreach and Workforce Development, uh, the Faculty of Arts and Sciences, and the Innovative Learning. So just to highlight the importance of this micro-credential, so with the DFW project, uh, we hope to fill the gap in the Canadian skills economy for a digital fluency training uh, that is both you know, foundational and cross-sectoral, like uh, Sarah was mentioning about uh, having industry consultations is key and then having their support is key. Uh, Sarah also mentioned about uh, the importance of PLAR. Um, so we wanted to make sure that these micro-credentials are as flexible as possible. And we have incorporated prior learning assessment and recognition in the curriculum. Uh, and then lastly, uh, because this is a research project, we hope that our learnings will, con will continue to contribute to the growing fields of micro-credentials and PLAR. Uh, but with a specific lens on workforce development. So I'm going to pass it off uh, to Sarah again uh, to, to discuss some of the uh, criteria that we, uh, that we considered when creating this micro-credential. Yeah, so we wanted to point out that digital fluency um, is a concept that really is uh, an equity issue and an equ equity concern. And uh, really, that was the basis of the decision to focus on a PLAR-based approach as well, because digital fluency is a spectrum of, a, of related skills. And we know that learners that were coming to us as part of this program would present a range of skills and uh, capabilities, and we wanted to uh, give the opportunity for the learning that was most needed. Can we go to the next slide? This was the learner path that we were envisioning and that we've tested. Um, and so really what this slide describes is uh, the learner who uh, completes a, an assessment uh, in advance of taking any of the learning. And that assessment allows us to establish which level of training um, the individual is, is best suited for uh, or in, most in need of. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the data, some of the results as far as who placed in which level of micro-credential. Um, but this is essentially the, the, the graphic image of what the path was for our learners. The entire process really started with consultation, as Frank mentioned. Um, this slide just captures the range of, of uh, consultations that we had. There were 30 participants in industry, and they were cross-sectoral. We really made a, an effort to ensure that we had voices from across a variety of different industries participating. We had community clients and, and agencies that support um, unemployed and, and underemployed individuals. We gathered internal subject matter experts, and we also invited our librarians to come into the process. And we pulled those sessions together 
as a very deep uh, consultation around what is digital fluency, what is digital, digital literacy, and what does that mean for the workforce? This is just a snapshot of some of the many people that many industries and, and groups that were a part of the, the, the consultation. And then these are some of the guiding questions that we employed during the process. So we asked those uh, participants to think about their own circumstance and to answer questions around what digital fluency looks like in their context, what uh, digital fluency can be learned and demonstrated in their context, et cetera. And so each one of those uh, consultations had a different flavor and a different uh, set of results, but together they were able to uh, form and formulate the content of the uh, micro-credentials themselves. So during the consultations um, with, with all of the, uh, the partners that Sarah just mentioned, um, we've identified about six cross-sectoral competencies that were closely aligned with our Humber learning outcomes. Uh, and these Humber learning outcomes are part of our strategic plan uh, to ensure that all graduates possess the necessary competencies, not just to have uh, success in the workforce, but also uh, in, in, in their own personal lives. Uh, so uh, I won't read off the, the six here, but uh, these are just the, the six learning outcomes that, that we've identified that were incorporated in the DFW micro-credentials. In terms of the structure, uh, we, we thought it would be interesting to highlight um, the, the structure of the DFW project. Um, so we delivered the program fully online uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, but we delivered them in two uh, models, uh, one asynchronous and then the other synchronous. Uh, because this is a research project, we wanted to know which model work, would work best for the learners that we are serving. Um, there are three micro-credentials in total, uh, ranging from uh, basic uh, to intermediate to proficient. Uh, and each of these micro-credentials is about uh, 12 to 15 hours in total. Um, so just wanted to dive right into to some of the results that we have so far. Uh, we actually just finished our cohorts back in December. So right now we're just going to be showing some preliminary results because we're still in the process of gathering all the data and compiling all of the data together from, uh, from about 300 participants that we've had. Uh, so as you guys can, uh, as you can see here, uh, we did have a lot of application pressure. So, you know, we had 652 applications, uh, which ended up being uh, 315 enrolled students. So we did it. Um, so we had a lot of people that were interested in the program. Um, in terms of the uh, target groups that, that we were serving for this project, I wanted to highlight that 87% um, uh, self-identified as a racialized person, 13% um, were youth, 24% uh, were newcomers, uh, and 16% identified as having essential skills gap. Uh, but I also wanted to highlight the other groups that were, were quite prominent in, in, in our demographics. So 73% were, were women, 13% uh, uh, were people with disabilities, and then another 74% were actually first-generation immigrants. Uh, so who our learners are, uh, we, when we started the program, we actually wanted a 60 to 40 split between synchronous and asynchronous. So, so we actually achieved that here. Uh, what we found is that, uh, you know, 50% uh, were confident uh, in their digital skills prior to starting the program, but about another half uh, were either unsure or not confident for their digital skills. Uh, when we did a survey prior to them starting the program, um, if you take a look into the, the right hand side here, 88% uh, of them mentioned that you know, digital skills were important for them to enter the workforce. Um, and 90% believe that taking a micro-credential program from you know, a post-secondary institution like Humber is important. Uh, and another about 80% uh, mentioned that having these micro-credentials backed by an industry partner is essential for them. 
Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we had uh, some interesting results around our, our PLAR approach. So about 31% of the individuals who started the program were able to uh, move directly to the second level. Um, and none, in fact, were able to move all the way through to the, um, uh, the, the, the third level. Um, but the remainder uh, began in level one. Um, and, or sorry, none were able to skip the entire uh, um, spectrum. Sorry, my eye jumped there. 93% uh, of the uh, participants agreed that PLAR had made the program more accessible. This was really important to us um, to find that, uh, that we expected um, that there would be a, an appreciation that there was credit for the learning that they already have, and they certainly did seem to express that to us. Do you want to go to the next one? And in terms of the micro-credential results themselves, we've had some excellent completion rates. 84% um, completed digital fluency one, 78% uh, completed two, and 84% completed three. And our satisfaction rates were tremendously uh, strong among not just their own, um, uh, within the cohorts themselves, uh, and also their recommendations that they felt would, uh, would make them more valuable to employers um, and their recommendations to friends. We have included some of the testimonials and endorsements that we have from the employers that were participants in the project. And when you receive the slides, you're welcome to have a, a look through these. Um, there are a couple of slides with some endorsements and then a couple of testimonials of the, the participants themselves. Um, and this has been a very important part of the feedback as well, the success stories that they've told and shared with us about their uh, results and their experience in the program. In terms of challenges and next steps, um, we certainly found that uh, there was confusion or, or uh, lack of understanding or, or agreement on what digital literacy was versus digital fluency. And we think that we've helped to serve some of that decision, uh, clarify some of that decision making. Um, there was some misconception as well in terms of what digital fluency meant in terms of you know, computer applications. It's not just limited to those things. Um, and we were obviously faced with challenges due to the pandemic. Um, and really what our next steps, our, our challenges right now are tied to our next steps. We're looking at the employment outcomes for our participants and whether or not the micro-credentials have really helped them to address the uh, barriers that they were uh, experiencing before the program um, and also to make the program um, scalable. And this is part of our commitment with future skills to uh, deliver this in a scalable model and a scalable way. Uh, and we also know that the value of it, based on the feedback we've had from employers and from participants alike, that, um, that scaling is an objective that we, we want to pursue. And some of our next steps, uh, I think, like I mentioned in the beginning, um, we're, we're still in the process of evaluating all of our project outcomes. Uh, uh, with, with the Humber uh, team, as well as the Future Skills Center. Uh, we're working on disseminating this knowledge, either through uh, publications or conferences or seminars. Uh, and we have a, a whole team of uh, curriculum developers and instructional designers that are uh, looking at our curriculum with a, with a fresh set of eyes to see what are the changes that we can potentially implement uh, to make the program uh, better at each iteration. And like Sarah mentioned, uh, scaling of the program is, is one key thing that we're also working on. So I'm just going to open it up to uh, questions. Uh, Sarah, was there anything else that we wanted to talk about? No, but we are definitely interested in, in questions and feedback. All right. Well, thank you so much, Sarah and Frank. That is a, a phenomenal project um, and the results are outstanding. Um, those are incredible. Um, there are a few questions coming in. Um, so I will start um, with a question from Minette. Uh, and uh, the question is, is there a fee uh, charged for the initial PLAR assessment? So no, um, we were able to deliver this, this uh, you know, to the 300 participants without um, a, a charge at all. And that's due to the funding that we've had through the Future Skills Center. And when we talk about scaling and we talk about uh, making this project feasible in other contexts, that's part of the equation to say, how do we build pre-assessment into 
um, all micro-credentials. And we've been doing some of that work and have some of those thoughts at Humber and some other um, uh, trials that we're doing with some other work that we have. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Uh, another that's come into the uh, Q&A, um, does Humber College have a policy or governance process that oversees the review and development of the micro-credentials? That's actually been work that's been happening in parallel with this project and some other micro-credentials that we've launched. So there has been um, other structural work just in terms of reporting and uh, uh, organization to support launching micro-credentials as a, a type of offering at Humber. And built into that is a quality assurance process that um, ensures that what we deliver is uh, fully aligned with other products at Humber, is fully aligned with uh, the requirements for the ministry in terms of OSAP eligibility. And um, as important as those things are, also to ensure that uh, the market, the employer, the earner of a micro-credential understands their value and can actually stand on their value. So quality assurance is absolutely at the heart of um, all of the micro-credentials that we're de developing and delivering here. All right, fantastic. Um, and another question that's come in is, um, which teaching model um, were the courses facilitated using? Um, I know you did mention um, that you offered uh, synchronous and asynchronous. Um, were there any other options that the students had? Frank, do you wanna, can, are you able to answer that or do you want me to try? Um, sure. Um... In terms of the, so it, we offered it in synchronous and asynchronous uh, through Blackboard. Uh, the, the main difference between the synchronous and asynchronous is that both models are still self-directed. So uh, each student had about 13 weeks to complete the program. Uh, they don't have to take that entire 13 weeks to actually complete the program. Some complete it in four weeks, eight weeks, et cetera. Um, with the synchronous, they have the opportunity to attend those live sessions every week with a facilitator. Uh, and then the asynchronous, uh, they have the opportunity to attend office hours uh, that are virtual with the facilitators and also ask questions via email or our phone call. So with both models, they do have access to a facilitator that will be helping them um, with all of the modules that they have to complete as part of the uh, micro-credentials. The original plan was that there would be the two models were going to be an in-person and an online. And that was envisioned before the pandemic. And so we had to completely shift. And we're still looking at that comparison and the, and the supporting process of fully self-directed versus a supported model. But um, I think that's one dimension that we haven't been able to fully test yet. But it is something that we're very interested in looking at too, especially in something as, as um, fundamental as digital literacy at, it, at its very um, most introductory level. Great, yeah, the, the pandemic kind of mucked <laughs> things up a bit for everyone, I think. Um, uh, I think we have time for a couple more questions. Um, so uh, Megan asks, what is the eligibility criteria for participants? And when they speak of, when you speak of scalability, uh, would this learning be accessible to learners outside of Ontario? Frank, I think you've probably got the data yep. on that one. Yeah, um, uh, in terms of criteria, um, we were looking at um, uh, targeting four uh, target groups. Uh, so as long as they fit within one of those four groups, they would be eligible for the uh, for the, uh, the micro-credentials. So youth ages 19 to 29, um, um, people self-identifying that they are in need of uh, essential skills, um, racialized groups, uh, as well as uh, newcomers within the past five years in Canada. Uh, one, um, one additional criteria that we do ask is that they are actively job searching uh, and they are not working full time right now uh, because they would need that time to, um, to actually devote to, to the program and to, to transition back to the workforce. So those are the major criteria. So um, um, fitting into that one of the four target groups as well as the um, not uh, as well as actively job searching right now. And Humber has uh, five employment agencies, employment cent service centers that we um, 
uh, operate around Humber's campuses and GTA. And we were able to use those centers as places to recruit individuals and to provide the initial screening for the program and, um, and provide some level of support to them. Um, you know, just in terms of ensuring that people had access to technology. When we spoke about uh, digital fluency as an equity issue, we had to deal with an, an instances where individuals wanted the program but didn't have access to the tools that they would need. And, and uh, that was information that was um, also part of our consultation that uh, employers who need entry level employees, but they need them to, to begin with a particular level of digital fluency and yet those individuals may not actually have access to the technology that's going to give them that skill. And so that's one of the, the sticky problems that we're, um, that we're working through with this program and, and why it was so important for Humber that this program be something that was offered across the institution. So the support from uh, the faculties, but the leadership of community outreach and workforce development was really um, a critical piece in order to make this program uh, successful. Great. Okay. Excellent. Um, we've got lots of questions coming in here, so I'll get through as many as we can with with a, with about four minutes left or so. Um, we have a question: How shareable is the competency model? <laughs> <laughs> so um, everything with respect to Humber's uh, the, the Humber learning outcomes is available on our, our humber.ca website. Um, and as Frank mentioned when he was talking about the competency framework, it was really rooted in that uh, Humber learning outcomes um, piece. And uh, I think we, you know, I, I think that the competency model um, is something that we would be able to, to give some sharing. Uh, we're including the competencies that we were uh, able to define through this project in the slide deck. And I would just say that if people have follow-up questions specifically, you know, you certainly can find us and, and reach out um, to speak more about what that model looks like. And, uh, you know, I, when we talk about scaling, uh, sharing this information and sharing this no knowledge, um, that's really the basis of how we will be able to scale this project. And, and obviously digital fluency is something that all of us have uh, a direct um, interest in. So I don't think we're being terribly proprietary about it, but at the same time, you know. Gotcha. Um, okay. Um, we also have a question about um, the learner feedback mecha mechanism that was used to gather the uh, the survey data. Yep. So the, the learner feedback, so because this is a research project, we've actually built in uh, surveys at each point, uh, at each important point of the, the program. So before starting the program, they would fill out a, a pre-program survey. Uh, after completing the program, they would fill out a post-program survey. Uh, and then after six months, uh, they would be completing another survey. And, and a lot of these surveys, we wanted to compare, you know, their, their digital skills between um, taking between before taking the program and after taking the program, but also collecting important pertinent information about our research. Uh, for example, are they pursuing um, another educational program? Are they now in post-secondary? Are they now working? And what field are they currently in? Um, and we've also implemented um, learner success stories where we actually uh, give them an opportunity to be interviewed in person or virtual, and then we also feature that on our on our website. Okay, great. Uh, questions come into the Q and A, which actually is on my piece of paper to to ask you guys as well. Is um, if you can elaborate um, on the PLAR process, uh, like what does it look like from from your end, and um, how do you go about assessing those prior learning um, recognitions? So. With respect to this particular project, the assessments that were being used for the for the pre assessment were uh, modified versions of the assessments that would be used at the end of the uh, each micro credential. Um, and at Humber, as we've been kind of devel developing and refining that thinking, um, we're also really saying that if there is an assessment in every micro credential, then the pre assessment is essentially can you complete the assessment. <laughs> 
And um, the, the beauty of micro-credentials, I think that we all are, are very aware of is the, um, the metadata uh, that supports the micro-credential. And yes, the metadata is contained in the badge, but the metadata needs to be reflected as well in any kind of promotional materials. And so I, as an individual, should be able to identify whether this is something that I think that I could complete successfully uh, without some additional learning or that I know that I'm going to need some additional learning. And uh, so at Humber, we're, we're using that end assessment essentially as, as the PLAR capability, um, rather than having something that's separate because essentially what we're doing is we're asking you to demonstrate competence and, and you know, there is one way to demonstrate competence or, you know, one um, set of ways to demonstrate competence. Does that make sense? That's probably a very awkward answer, but I am also conscious of the time. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's wonderful. Um, thank you so much, Sarah and Frank, and uh, congratulations on the on the project. It's phenomenal. Um, so we will uh, move to a break and then resume uh, with the next session in five. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day.